they are getting minimum double the yield in almost all crops. The doubling the productivity and doubling the profit, uh, great saving of water and practically it is uh, uh, like a new boom. They are seeing a new boom in agriculture. The primary starting point was really to go and look at historical evidence about how the Green Revolution in the 1960s, 1970s, 1980s had actually operated and the hope was to find um, a, a case study or two where we could go and, and look at the evidence. Um, in doing that, we, by chance we made contact with uh, Tamil Nadu Agricultural University who had a contemporary project and we suddenly realised, well, one of the difficulties of doing it as a historical project is not being able to t talk to the scientists or the farmers at that time uh, that the process was happening. And here we were handed almost on a plate um, a, a chance to study um, the process itself. So we started off wanting to do a historical study and ended up doing a contemporary study. Um, after India gained independence from Britain after the end of the Second World War, uh, one problem they faced was a very rapidly rising population. Um, and so in the early 60s they faced this problem about how to feed that growing population. Um, and so the Green Revolution, without going into too much detail about it, but basically it was a way of trying to introduce new technologies which, which would lead to higher yields of agricultural products like wheat and rice. And hopefully that would then meet uh, the population demand. And, and in that sense that was quite successful. Um, so India didn't hit the population ceiling with massive famines and so on. Now what's interesting about what was happening now is um, I think in the Tamil Nadu Agricultural University scientists even refer to it as the second green revolution. So this is going on to the next stage um, using what they call precision farming. So using technology and advice about things like soil preparation, spacing between crops uh, and so on to maximise the outputs and productivity they get from the limited inputs that poorer farmers, not the poorest, but poorer farmers, uh, have available to them. They basically had two districts, poor districts in Tamil Nadu, and they selected 200 farmers in each. Uh, and so then we decided that what we needed to do was to go and interview the farmers. Ashish Belka went out initially and spent uh, about 10 days interviewing a whole range of farmers and, and talking to the scientists. So these were all one-on-one -on -one interviews with the, with the farmers. One of the things that we wanted to capture was the source of information, whether knowledge about the technology travels in advance of the technology itself. I think one of the first things that emerged out of the uh, this was how keen the farmers were to talk to us, uh, which in fact uh, says a lot about the, their experience and, and, and the whole project as such. Naturally, this was a new technology to the to the farmers, but the farmers were experts in their own way uh, about cultivation techniques that worked on their farms. Because this was seen as a dialogue between the, the scientists and the farmers, uh, the scientists were learning many things about uh, how the technology would work actually in the field, uh, whether it made, uh, whether it, it deviated significantly from what they were expecting or not, what kind of changes were necessary uh, uh, to this technology. All these aspects were, were traveling, uh, not in just one way, from the scientists to the farmers, but, but also from the farmers back to the scientists. So it was a new approach uh, where the, the scientists were going to talk directly to the farmers. In fact, some of the scientists were going to be in, embedded uh, with the farmers, providing uh, advice on an almost daily uh, basis. And so, so the, the, the idea of studying it was really to see um, very crudely at first is how did the scientists convince the farmers to adopt this new uh, technology? Uh, I am Dr. N. Sriram, working as a assistant professor at Tamil Nadu Agriculture University. And I am Balaji, I am work as assistant professor, uh, human resource and marketing. Uh, basically, if you talk about the extension system in Tamil Nadu, traditionally, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University or any other research institution, they usually develop a technique. We transfer to the extensive official through training programs and uh, some other demonstrations. But through this Tamil Nadu Precision Farming project, we tried in different way. Uh, when we started this project in 2004, it is going to be the, pro the scientists stayed there for, uh, with the farmers till uh, from, from morning to the night. So here the scientists, 
stayed in the village and lived with the crop and daily they are uh, discussed with the farmers and uh, trained the farmers on technology and management practices. But uh, uh, slowly the, the, there is the conversion and uh, at the second phase the farmers become conveyors of the message and they, they took the lead from ourselves, they took the lead. The farmers starting the extension. From the farmers, the training goes to the other non-project farmers. The farmers are coming forward and asking to the farmer extension officers, what is that project, give me more inputs and what are the things coming in the state government, what are the schemes coming under. This is a very unique in this project. Right now, this extension model is being practiced in other projects also. As we um, learnt about the farmers, as we learnt more about the scientists, um, it allowed us to deepen um, and broaden, in fact, uh, what we thought we could get out of such a study. So, um, so it's, it's a roundabout way, but we ended up fortuitously finding this project. And even more fortuitously, it was actually quite a successful project. We tried more than 50 crops. Some crops, the yield, that is the productivity is exorbitant. When compared to our normal national average, for example, Brinjal, if you say, it is 17 tonnes in one hectare, that is a national average. But a progressive farmer are harvesting around 60 tonnes in hybrid. But here, because of this techniques, precision farming technology, the farmers are, farmers recorded more than 500 tonnes, it is in the open field, not in protected cultivation. Uh, the great impact is convincing the policy maker to scale up the project. The government of Tamil Nadu has scaled up the project into all the districts. Then after that, the government, here, India, government of India also has also given a fund to scale up the project up to 50,000 hectares across the Tamil Nadu. Apart from the Tamil Nadu, the project has travelled to other states of India. And practically it is a, uh, like a new boom. They are seeing a new boom in agriculture. This was set up as a demonstration project to show really two things. One is that the technology that they had developed worked under real uh, conditions, in under field conditions. And secondly, uh, the, the, the method of extension education uh, was also very important. Uh, the direct uh, interaction between the, the scientists and the farmers and the intensity with which the scientists were involved in the project really ensured the success, a successful transfer of, of the technology, not only in, in its technical terms, but in all its institutional terms. These are trends that we've seen in emerging markets earlier in history. It's interesting to see the, the, the way markets are evolving in India following a fairly similar pattern of, of development. That was a, that was a fascinating part of uh, part of, of, of being involved in this, in this project. What was really interesting to me was actually having to deal with, with people who are alive uh, and oral histories um, and um, so I, th I found all of that quite fascinating and in fact um, it, it, it's uh, not a new lease of life but it gave you an extra part of your work which, which in some ways reinvigorated your standard mainstream economic history work so I think that was, that was quite interesting.